Breaking news as we continue to track this Walla wildfire. It's literally chasing residents and even our crews farther away from Springerville and Greer at this hour. And you can see the view they have. This is brand new video from our ABC 15 wildfire team just outside of Springerville on the US 60. We have team coverage for you tonight with ABC 15 Steve Irvin and Eric English close to the fire lines. And even more coverage for you right here in the valley. If you only had 30 minutes to evacuate your home, what would you take? We put One Valley Family to the test. Also tonight, we have breaking information on a brand new wildfire sparking a manhunt right now in Flagstaff. First, though, we do want to go live to ABC 15. Steve Irvin and Steve, you, all of you were evacuated out of Springerville. Now I understand you're about 10 miles outside of there where that wildlife briefing or wildfire briefing, rather, has just wrapped up. Katie, they evacuated us earlier because of concerns about the fire that we can actually see a little bit over my shoulder. You can see the glow of those flames right down there on the horizon. Now, obviously, this is still several miles away, but it's also uh, threatening Springerville, threatening Eager, the biggest threat being spot fires and embers that might float into the city and eventually threaten structures and homes and that sort of thing in that area itself. We're going to get to more on the Springerville and Eager evacuations in just a moment. But first, we want to get to what's happening in Greer tonight because we've gotten so many emails and calls from people wondering exactly what's happened there. We were able to watch the growth of this fire on a fire tour a little bit earlier just to the north of that fire as it continues continued to spread. What happened today? That fire jumped a fire line. Some of the embers did. We had spot fires going up in Greer, and we are told that fire began to grow into the town itself, uh, possibly destroying a number of buildings. People have told us a lot of things, but here's what they are saying officially about the damage there. Uh, some pretty tough firefighting. Uh, this was very hot going through here. Um, they uh, disengaged at one point, reevaluated, and reengaged. We are evaluating what effects that's had on the structures in Greer right now. Uh, nothing uh, confirmed at this point. Uh, we are expecting to learn more about just exactly what's happened, how many structures we may have lost in the Greer area sometime tomorrow morning. And, of course, we'll be updating you on that. Meantime, we talked about the evacuations, the latest ones in Springerville and Eager. Uh, those evacuations affecting about 7,000 people. In fact, we were able to uh, show you some of the last people sort of packing up and moving out of this ghost town. Many people had already left. They were boarding up uh, gas stations there, just a handful of businesses still staying open, lots of people headed out at that time and of course uh, lots of people just saying it's it, it's enough we're not going to be in this town anymore a handful of people though staying behind and uh, keeping their businesses open for the fire officials and the people who have to go there eric english actually talking to some folks at a restaurant they've been working some long hours because they're feeding just about everybody left in the town of springerville well they are and these uh, mandatory evacuations have pretty much left the towns of springerville and eager pretty much deserted except for the firefighters and of course law enforcement everybody else is pretty much moved out of the path of these flames, but there is one bright spot where you can still pop in for a hot meal and catch a break from all this smoke. The sign says open. It's one of the few signs of its kind left here tonight. It looks like we've got one restaurant open in town. The towns of Springerville and Eager have practically shut down as flames from the Wallow Fire threaten from the southeast, forcing evacuations. Barry Harris, the owner of the Sapphire Restaurant, and his staff got special permission to stay open and help keep those serving to protect the town fed and their coffee cups full. If it wasn't for the guys here, uh, we wouldn't have a town. He says they'll welcome the crews in off the fire lines and keep the kitchen open as long as they can. Well, we're not going to evacuate. I told him when I felt uncomfortable, uh, I'll tell him to let's pack up and go. With more than 20 years in the area, Harris tells me the town will battle on, despite the destruction going on around them. City leaders agree. We've got a lot of people, a lot of emergency response people here, and a lot of fire departments from all over the country. and. We're uh, making the best of it. 
Now, a lot of the people I spoke with who were packing up and getting out of town told me they felt confident that the firefighters would be able to get a grip on this fire. And as soon as the smoke clears, they were hoping that this town will return to normal. Yeah. Steve, we certainly hope that's the case. Yeah, they will bounce back. We know that very much. Of course, they're continuing to bring even more resources into this fire. Today, we learned that they're bringing in perhaps the largest piece of firefighting equipment that's available. It's a 747 super tanker, and we've told you about this before. It actually comes out of Eloy. It's able to pack just an enormous amount of fire retardant inside. It's best used in flatland areas like grassland areas, that sort of thing, but that can come in handy, especially when these fires can literally move as fast as the wind through those grassland areas. We want to give you the latest numbers on this fire. They haven't changed now for the last several hours. Still at 389 thousand acres about 2500 firefighters still battling this fire it still stands at zero percent containment but at the media briefing tonight they were saying they may up that to one or two percent based on some lines that are holding on the northeast side of this fire still it's very difficult to say that they've gotten much of a handle on this at all and more than 500 structures threatened we are expecting those numbers to be updated the the size of this fire is enormous more than 500 square miles and to give you an idea just how big this fire really is, it would actually cover an area larger than the area of the city of Phoenix. That's how big it is and growing. If it continues to grow at the rate that it has, it will easily become, at least in acreage, the largest fire, the largest wildfire we've ever seen in Arizona. Meantime, we have some new worries tonight. The Hill Fire now burning a little bit east of Flagstaff and sheriff's deputies need your help. They're trying to track down a person of interest. Here's what they're calling it. They're calling it suspicious because it's made up of nearly 10 smaller fires, which started at the same time in the Turkey Hills area. It's only about two miles north of I-40. Got brand new video in for you as fire crews swarm this immediately. We're told it's about 50 50 to 100 acres right now, about 20% contained. People in the area of Coke Field Road south of Camp Townsend Winona Road have been evacuated, but the good news, we are hearing that evacuation could be called off once they're able to restore power in the next hour or so. We do know at least one unoccupied trailer has been destroyed. There are several other structures at risk, but fire crews tell us they do expect to have it fully contained by the morning. And here's what we know about this person of interest right now. His name is O'Brien Wilson Key. He's described as a Native American man. Witnesses say they saw him wearing a red t-shirt, blue jeans, black cowboy boots in the very area where these fires started. If you know Key or you know where he is, call the Coconino County Sheriff's Office. So still a big battle ahead. Firefighters here tonight saying they're not optimistic at this point that they're going to be able to get this thing contained any time soon because of the windy conditions, because it has just been so tough to fight this fire. And obviously we're going to find out a lot more about what's happening in the town of Greer by morning's light. Katie? Yeah, we're just glad there haven't been any injuries out there to fire crews either. All right, thanks, Steve. In Mesa tonight, uh, more fire crews arriving uh, from other states, all to help in our firefight. Early this morning, about 100 firefighters showed up at the Williams Gateway Airport from all over, places like Idaho, California, Oregon. And then tonight, another 100 firefighters checked in. The crews will be housed at the Interagency Fire Center at the airport until they're sent out to fire lines. You know, ex expectation is, is stay focused, stay hydrated, stay safe and go 110 percent and uh, make sure we all get back to camp. Many of the firefighters we talked to say this is their first time working in Arizona. NASA helping to gauge the health effects of the Wallow Fire. This satellite image shows you how high winds are not only propelling the flames but also helping to ignite spot fires some three miles ahead of the blaze. This is now affecting the air quality all throughout much of the United States.